Chapter Four of Stories of Beowulf Told to the Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Stories of Beowulf Told to the Children by H. E. Marshall. Chapter Four How Beowulf Overcame Grendel the Ogre. And now all slept, save Beowulf alone. Then out of the creeping mist that covered the moorland forth, the evil thing strode. Right onward to the hall he came, goaded with fearful wrath. The bolts and bars he burst asunder, with but a touch, and stood within the hall. Out of the dark Grendel's eyes blazed like fire. Loud he laughed wild demon laughter, as he gazed around upon the sleeping warriors. Here truly was a giant feast spread out before him, and ere morning light should come, he meant to leave no man of them alive. So loud he laughed. Beowulf, watchful and angry, yet curbed his wrath. He waited to see how the monster should attack nor had he long to wait. Quickly stretching forth a fang, Grendel seized a sleeping warrior. Ere the unhappy one could wake, he was torn asunder. Greedily Grendel drank his blood, crushed his bones, and swallowed his horrid feast. Again the goblin stretched forth his claws, hungry for his feast. But Beowulf, raising himself upon his elbow, reached out his hand and caught the monster. Then had the giant felt fierce wrath and pain. Never before had he made trial of such a hand grip. In it he writhed and struggled vainly. Hotter and hotter grew his anger, deeper and deeper his fear. He longed to flee, to seek his demon lair, and there make merry with his fellows. But though his strength was great, he could not win free from that mighty grasp. Then Beowulf, remembering his boast that he would conquer the ruthless beast, stood upright, gripping the ogre yet more firmly. Awful was the fight in the darkness. This way and that the ogre swayed, but he could not free himself from the clutch of those mighty fingers. The noise of the contest was as of thunder. The fair hall echoed and shook with demon cries of rage, until it seemed that the walls must fall. The wine in the cups was spilled upon the floor. The benches, overlaid with gold, were torn from their places. Fear and wonder fell upon the Dane folk, for far and wide the din was heard, until the king trembled in his castle, the slave in his hut. The knights of Beowulf awoke, arose, drew their sharp swords, and plunged into the battle. They fought right manfully for their master, their great leader, but though they dealt swift and mighty blows, it was in vain. Grendel's hide was such that not the keenest blade ever wrought of steel could pierce it through. No war-axe could wound him, for by enchantments he had made him safe. Nay, by no such honorable means might death come to the foul ogre. Louder and louder grew the din, fiercer and wilder the strife, hotter the wrath of those who strove. But at length the fight came to an end. The sinews in Grendel's shoulder burst, the bones cracked. Then the ogre tore himself free and fled, wounded to death, leaving his arm in Beowulf's mighty grip. Sobbing forth his death song, Grendel fled over the misty moorland until he reached his dwelling in the lake of the water dragons, and there plunged in. 
The dark waves closed over him, and he sank to his home. Loud were the songs of triumph in Hart Hall, great the rejoicing. For Beowulf had made good his boast. He had cleansed the hall from the ogre. Henceforth might the Dane folk sleep peacefully therein. And so the Goths rejoiced, and over the doorway of the hall, in token of his triumph, Beowulf nailed the hand and arm and shoulder of Grendel. Then when morning came and the news was spread over all the land, there was much joy among the Dane folk. From far and near many a warrior came riding to the hall to see the marvel. Over the moor they rode too, tracking Grendel's gory footsteps, until they came to the lake of the water dragons. There they gazed upon the water as it boiled and seethed, colored dark with the poison blood of the ogre. Then back with light hearts they sped, praising the hero. From north to south they cried, between the seas and all the world over. There is none so valiant as he, none so worthy of honor. With loosened rein they galloped in the gay sunshine, and by the way minstrels made songs and sang of the mighty deeds of the goth hero, praising him above the heroes of old. In all the land there was song and gladness. Then from his bower came the aged king, clad in gorgeous robes. Behind him was his treasurer, the keeper of his gold, and a great troop of warriors. With him walked the queen, splendid too, in robes of purple and gold, while many fair ladies followed in her train. Over the flower-starred meadow they passed, stately and beautiful, until they stood before the hall. As Hrothgar mounted the steps, he gazed upon the roof shining with gold in the sun. He gazed, too, upon the hand and arm of Grendel. Great was his joy and gladness. Then the king turned to the people gathered there. For this sight be thanks at once given to the all-wise, he cried. What sorrow and trouble hath Grendel caused me? When I saw my hall stained with blood, when I saw my wise men bowed with grief, broken in spirit, I hope no more. I thought never in this life to be repaid for all the brave men that I have lost. Then, lo! When my sorrow was dark, there cometh a young warrior, a youth mighty in battle, and he hath done the deed that all our wisdom was not able to perform. Then, turning to Beowulf, the king stretched out his hand and cried, Now, O Beowulf, greatest of fighters, henceforth will I love thee as a son. No wish of thine, but I will grant it to thee, if it be in my power. Full oft of yore have I for lesser deeds given great rewards. Treasure and honor have I heaped upon knights less brave than thou, less mighty in war. But thou, by thy deeds, hast made for thyself a glorious name, which shall never be forgotten. Then Beowulf proudly humble, answered, It was joy to do the daring deed. Blithe at heart we fought the unknown one. But I would that thou thyself had seen the ogre among the treasures of the hall. I thought to bind him on a bed of death, but in my hand he might not lie. He was too strong for me. His body slipped from my grasp. Nevertheless he left me with his hand and arm and shoulder. It is certain that now he lieth dead, and will never more trouble the land. There was joy among the heroes as Beowulf spoke, but Hunferth hung his head and bit his lip in silence. He no longer had desire to taunt the hero or make boast of his own warcraft. Shame held him speechless. 
and so through all that day the crowd came and went before the door of Hart Hall. Greatly did all men marvel at the fearful sight, at the war hand of the ogre. The nails were like steel, the fingers like daggers, and the whole hide so hard that no sword, however finely welded, might pierce it through. It was indeed a great marvel. End of chapter 4 Recording by Rhonda Fetterman